Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Uh, my presentation will probably be a bit different from the previous one, although it relates in, to it in terms of pluridisciplinarity and, inter, and the approach might be a bit different, but it also relates to the field tour we had yesterday. And I think if you have in mind the field tour, that will be easier for you to see what I'm talking about. So the idea is, I'm talking on behalf of the other colleagues and with, working with me, I must say that INRA is the largest research institute in Europe and probably the second one, one worldwide. And I'm in charge of the organic research program for INRA, which last for, like, we started in 1999. So what I like you know, in these three topics, which you see in the bottom, one is food, the other one is agriculture, and the third one is environment, which are the three main topics for INRA. And to me, organic farming, food and farming, I would say, relates the three topics. So I think it's, well, that's an argument for us to put organic farming at the, cro at the crossroads, I would say, between food, agriculture, and environment, okay? So that's the general picture. So what I'm going to talk about is about tr performances, trade-off, dimensions, and maybe distance between conventional and organic. Uh, I think it, that's how it works. So as for the outline, I'd like first to introduce one idea that we like in France and which will be the topic of a book which is supposed to be released this year. That's the idea of being a prototype of innovative and sustainable agriculture. So I'll tell you why I see this uh, idea of prototype as interesting potentially. The next uh, section will be about the challenges about, and the approach we use to address those challenges for organic uh, fruit production and namely to address the issue of getting performances and assess those performances. And I'll show you some, briefly some results in crop protection and fruit quality issues trying to link, to relate dimensions, several dimensions of performances. I don't think I'll have time to go into economics and I'll conclude on challenges. So, about the idea of prototype, I just wanted to remind what's going on at EU level. We discussed yesterday the, the issue of equivalence, but in the regulation 834-2007, the question of societal role of organic agriculture is clear, and it's not only uh, to respond to market demand, but the idea of public goods and public services as well somehow is present in the regulation, in the whereas uh, section, which nobody looks at, but the, it gives direction for regulations. So with the idea of prototype, you know, we recently we had the 24 hours of Le Mans, and the idea of prototype is to say it's not an old car, that's something which we, uh, you know, if we have uh, ABS and safety belts on our cars, that's because it was tested in racing conditions. And this idea of looking at organic agriculture as prototype with a higher level of constraints uh, as compared with other agricultures, since we don't, we say we won't use such and such means or methods or facilities. But I also want to remind the idea of having a solar powered prototype because, so to my knowledge, the only infinite free resource will be sunshine and hopefully in this region we have much of it so we should make it work. So that's the idea of the first idea of prototype is, you know, these extreme conditions where agriculture has been run with. The second idea within the idea of prototype, which is, that's a general category. Uh, let's say apple is probably the best idea of a fruit, you know, but a penguin wouldn't be the best idea of a bird that you can have. But this idea of prototype is, you know, what is the main idea? And then there are differences. There are other categories in that, okay? So within this general category, we can have a diversity. And what I want to stress there is not only the internal diversity of organic farming, but the diversity of agriculture and how organics relate, we say organics, plural, and how organics relate with other agricultures as well. 
And the third idea with, of the prototype is that it's not finished, stabilized, it's not perfect, I would say, okay? So that's why we use this idea of prototype. So in terms of method, what are we doing? We've been working, I would say, at three levels. Since we're talking about systems, we work in at farm, with farmers and to address diversi crop diversification, cr diversity of crops, to address marketing, we need to be in touch with farmers. So that's, uh, that would relate, I would say, to systems approach. So that's one level, and we, because in organic, we assume that farmers have knowledge, and research workers also have knowledge, but sharing knowledge and creating knowledge is an important issue. So we work at field level for field surveys, monitoring, and so on. And we also had um, lab um, measurements, namely on fruit quality, on, and I'll talk about polyphenols more specifically. So we looked at agro agronomic performances, environmental, socio-economic performances. So I'll go back to the second one about environment, more into details, and about the first one on yield quality. So what we did on environment, and namely on crop protection, is, you know the first one, the treatment frequency index, I guess, which is familiar, which, which is quite used. But what we did is we confronted this index to another one which was designed for uh, tree crop production, apple production, that's i fi we call it, just to, be, to, to, be, to go a bit further into um, estimation of environmental impacts with two dimensions. One, the first one is estimating the risk for the environment, leaching in groundwater, surface, surface water, and risk to, for drift as well in the air, and risk for beneficials. So what's in the rating, what uh, uh, high score um, corresponds to low risk. So here you have, in three categories, we have um, organic farming, AB, that's the logo we have in France, which will uh, we now change with the European one, conventional and conversion. We find that conversion might be a specific uh, situation. So as for the I, IFT, Treatment Frequency Index, you see not only, well, a better position of organic farming, that's on the left-hand side, with a, a mean or median position which is lower than the others, but a huge variability as well in the results, in number of treatments uh, applied. Whereas, as for the other one, the i fi score that we have, you see the higher score for organic agriculture, that's AB on the, well, this one, on the left-hand side, but uh, also big variation in the other scores. So we have better scores as, as a whole uh, in organic with this method, but variability as well, okay? So what we did as well, I'll be brief on that, but we, on, at farm level, we had a work um, in uh, 2008 where we tried to assess, to understand first what were the crop production strategies implemented by the farmers and to assess them in terms of uh, damage done at field level, which is the, the left path, so the more, uh, the lower the, the, the gradient on the y-axis is, the less damage you have, okay? So that's infestation index with aphids in that case, mostly. Yeah. And on the right-hand side, we look at the number of beneficials, uh, the amount of beneficials, and the diversity of beneficial insects in the field. So we identified four strategies. The first one is preventative and with intensive use of pesticide by farmers. That's S1. S2 is mostly, well, the first one is preventive, and the next one is more curative, but with the use of pesticides, which those two categories, that's in conventional and integrated farming. Whereas the S3 and S4 are with organic farmers. So you see in that case, we have more uh, infestation with, in the two organic situations, and again, S3 would be more preventive use of pesticides, and the, the other one more integrating, having a combination of cultural methods and uh, may disruption and all of that, uh, with, that, you, that you know. 
But on the opposite, you see the diversity of beneficials that we have in organic is not only higher, but there is the range of beneficials which is different. So in that case, we have a tension between efficient protection and effect on beneficials, which is not very new, but that's quite interesting to see how it relates to crop protection strategies implemented by farmers. So we looked as well at fruit quality dimensions, and maybe one, an interesting one, there you have the ratio between conventional and uh, organic uh, fruit in peach, that spring lady variety mostly. Uh, no, in that case, that spring lady. So what we have with yield is lower in organic, which is not a scoop either. But what we looked at, interestingly, is the polyphenol content. They usually were higher, especially at field, in farmers' fields. But we did an experiment afterwards because, and where we had a, a lower results, I mean, but still a bit higher than conventional, conventional, but we assume that there might be a dilution effect when we intensify organic, when we use more nitrogen particularly, that could be detriment, detrimental to polyphenol content. Okay, I'll be brief. Well, that's economic results. I don't think I have time for that. What we did to be within the system uh, uh, approach which was suggested in this session. We looked at all those uh, results, put them together and compare them with literature. So I'll jump to conclusions because time is getting short. First idea, I think in the decathlon, organic is probably the winner. But you know in a decathlon you're doing several things one after the other. And maybe one of the challenges is to combine them to, be, to have synchronicity in those performances. But I think definitely there is an advantage in the coverage, in the number of performances or dimensions which are covered by organic agriculture. But no, no, no dimension is perfect, I would say. Okay? So therefore, the second idea is about performances, I think if we really want to consider all those performances and the idea of ecosystem services and public goods, which are now in the European regulation, we also have to think about the, the evaluation criteria that we use to assess those performances, to measure them. And that's relation between performances or dimensions addressed and the way, the instruments we use to measure that, which is to me a critical issue for research. Uh, for instance, we compared uh, EIQ um, co uh, quotient from Cornell University with what we use, and the results are different, so we have to pay attention to that. To me, internal diversity is an asset for uh, fruit production, and we've seen that diversity yesterday. As to say, there are progress and poss possibilities and progress loops. As for models, just to be brief on that, the first, I don't know whether you're familiar with that, that's... Uh, Pro net protections against uh, codlin moth, which is a physical b barrier we have for uh, apple orchards. And on the other side, you would have a more natural vision of an orchard. And in between, there's something we also pay attention to, which I didn't see yesterday, that models integrating livestock uh, within orchards, or could be other animals, could be geese or whatsoever. So we have a variety of models, of candidate models, to address as well. The, Final conclusions, slide on conclusions is, well, maybe if we look at organic dynamics, we could also th think not only on states, about states and what, is, what exists now, but look at future possibilities and long-term dynamics, and maybe look as, at a set of properties which could guide as well evolutions. So there is a list of properties, but we talk about resilience, adaptive capability, and so on and reproducibility for many of them, but that could be a way to think about the future. I talked already about the trade-offs between uh, and within properties, so can we come have both uh, the butter and the, you know, and the money of butter? <laughs> but there are certainly some trade-offs between productivity, long-term, short-term, between something we're looking at as well is whether intensifying organic agriculture and food production or horticulture in particular would be detrimental to food quality and to environmental aspects. So we also have 
perhaps have to pay more attention uh, between, well, uh, make a difference between, I would say, incremental innovations, as what we've seen yesterday, and how they fit within system design or redesign. I think there are two options for, uh, two different options for innovation. And the last uh, idea, or maybe suggestion, is about, uh, if we think about upscaling organic fruit production, we also have that leads to new questions about collective uh, entities, collective bodies. We perhaps we have to shift from individual so, uh, solutions uh, to more collective actions with new with new stakeholders, with perhaps more cooperation to upscale organic agriculture. Okay, that's thank you for your attention. <laughs> Uh, the question is about trade-off between fruit size and polyphenol content. What we observed in the field, well, that's um, we there's a publication or two publications on that, so I, I'll let you have the information. But just to be brief, we, we've seen that the main trade-off. Uh, would be between uh, fertilization practices, namely, namely use of nitrogen and polyphenol contents. We had, let's say, uh, similar polyphenol contents. It was ranged in peach production between 40 and 80 uh, units per hectare. And the higher the nitrogen, the lower the polyphenol content. So as you know, there is also a relation between nitrogen and fruit size. So I, I'll let you have the publications on that. Thank you.